Sarah Mitchell lived alone in a small, quiet suburb. She was a 32-year-old graphic designer, leading a peaceful and predictable life. Her routine was comforting until the night her phone rang at midnight. Startled, Sarah answered the call. A distorted voice said, Tomorrow there will be a burglary at the convenience store on Elm Street. The call ended abruptly. Sarah dismissed it as a prank, though it left her uneasy. The next day, news broke about a burglary at the very store mentioned. Sarah's unease turned to dread. She tried to convince herself it was a coincidence. But that night, at midnight, her phone rang again. Tomorrow, there will be a hit and run on Maple Avenue, the same distorted voice said. Sarah's heart raced. She called the police, but without evidence, they couldn't take action. The next day, the hit and run happened, as foretold. Sarah felt trapped in a nightmare. She started documenting the calls, noting the precise details and timing. She confided in her neighbor and friend, Tom Henderson, who tried to reassure her, but was equally perplexed. Desperate for help, Sarah took her notes to the local police station. She explained everything to the officer on duty, but he dismissed her concerns as mere coincidences. Frustrated and scared, Sarah left the station, feeling more alone than ever. That night, her phone rang at midnight once more. The same distorted voice spoke. I see the police didn't believe you, it said with a hint of satisfaction. So far, my predictions have come true, haven't they? But listen carefully, Sarah. Danger is closing in on you. If you want to stay safe and hear what's coming next, you must do exactly as I say. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. The voice continued, I will contact you again soon. Be ready. The line went dead, leaving Sarah in a state of fear and uncertainty. Alone in her darkened home, Sarah sat clutching her phone, the recent events replaying in her mind. Each call had been accurate, and now the threat had become personal. She knew she couldn't face this alone, but felt helpless with the police unwilling to help. As she waited for the next call, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that her every move was being watched. The once comforting silence of her home now felt oppressive, filled with unseen dangers lurking in the shadows. The fear of the unknown hung over her like a dark cloud, marking the end of her ordinary life and the beginning of a perilous ordeal. Sarah couldn't sleep that night. The eerie silence and the looming threat of another call kept her wide awake. The next day, at work, she confided in her colleague, Catherine. Sarah recounted the disturbing events, sharing her fear and confusion about who could be behind the calls and why they were happening. Catherine listened intently, her expression a mix of concern and disbelief. It sounds terrifying, Sarah, she said. Why don't I stay with you tonight? Maybe it'll help to have someone else there. Relieved and grateful, Sarah agreed. That evening, Catherine arrived at Sarah's house. The two women waited anxiously as the clock ticked closer to midnight. When the clock struck 12, its chimes echoing through the quiet house, both women held their breath, but no call came. As the hours passed, one o'clock, then two o'clock, Still no call. Eventually, fatigue overcame them, and they fell asleep in the living room. The next morning, Sarah was perplexed. Why didn't the call come last night? She wondered aloud. Could it be because you were here? Catherine shrugged, unsure. Maybe it's over, or maybe the caller knew I was here, she suggested. Despite her reassurances, Sarah felt uneasy and asked Catherine to stay another night. 
At work, Sarah found it hard to concentrate. Thoughts of the mysterious calls plagued her mind, making it difficult to focus on her tasks. That evening, Catherine returned, and the two women prepared for another long night of waiting. Midnight came and went, followed by the early morning hours, but once again, no call. The following day, still no call. Sarah's mind raced with questions. Had the caller stopped because Catherine was present? Or had they simply chosen another night to strike? By now, Catherine's skepticism was evident. She seemed less convinced about the seriousness of the situation. Maybe it was just a prank, Sarah, she suggested. If the calls have stopped, maybe you can relax now. Sarah wasn't so sure. The absence of calls was almost more unsettling than their presence. She felt on edge, wondering if the caller was simply waiting for the right moment. She didn't want to impose on Catherine further, so she decided to face the next night alone. As night fell, Sarah's anxiety grew. She sat in her living room, clutching her phone, her eyes darting to the clock every few minutes. Midnight came and went with no call. One o'clock, then two o'clock. Finally, she fell into a restless sleep, haunted by dreams of the distorted voice. In the middle of the night, Sarah's eyes snapped open. She tried to move, but her body felt heavy and unresponsive. Panic surged through her as she realized she wasn't in her living room anymore. Cold, sterile lights shone down on her, and the unmistakable smell of antiseptic filled the air. She was lying on a surgical table, restrained by leather straps across her wrists and ankles. The room was stark white, filled with medical equipment that hummed and beeped ominously. Her heart pounded in her chest as she struggled to understand what was happening. Then, the door creaked open, and a figure in surgical attire and a mask appeared. Their eyes were cold and unfamiliar. They approached a tray of gleaming surgical tools and carefully picked up a scalpel. Good evening, Sarah, the figure said. Their voice was eerily familiar, now clear and undistorted. You have been quite the puzzle. Sarah's mind raced. How had she ended up here? Who was this person? The last thing she remembered was falling asleep on the sofa, waiting for the call that never came. Now she was trapped in a nightmare that felt all too real. The figure moved closer, the scalpel glinting under the harsh light. We have a lot to discuss, but first, you need to stay very still. Terror enveloped Sarah. She realized she couldn't escape. She lay there, helpless, watching as the figure loomed over her. Her vision blurred with tears, and silent screams echoed in her mind. The moment the scalpel touched her skin, Sarah woke with a start. She was back on her living room sofa, drenched in sweat, her heart racing. The room was silent and undisturbed. The clock showed a little past 3 a.m., she got up trembling, taking deep breaths. It had felt so real. Every sensation, every detail. Was it a dream or a warning? Sarah had no way of knowing. The fear and uncertainty that had haunted her were now magnified tenfold. Trembling and drenched in sweat, the morning light began to filter through the curtains, casting a dim glow across her living room. The fear from her vivid nightmare lingered, making it impossible for her to sleep any longer. The sterile lights, the smell of antiseptic, and the cold presence of the figure in surgical scrubs haunted her thoughts. She felt as if she was teetering on the edge of reality and nightmare, unable to discern what was real anymore. The stress weighed heavily on her, 
making her body feel like it was moving through thick fog. She stared at the clock, its hands moving steadily towards the start of another day. The events of the past few weeks played over in her mind like a broken record. Each call, each prediction, the feeling of being watched, it was all too much. Just then, her phone rang, cutting through the oppressive silence like a knife. Her heart skipped a beat as she recognized the same distorted voice from the previous calls. Today, two men in black suits will visit your house. Do not open the door. Hide in the space under the stairs. That's the only way you'll be safe. The call ended abruptly, leaving her with a sinking feeling of dread. Fear and confusion gripped Sarah, but her determination to unravel the mystery grew stronger. She hurried to get ready for work, her hands trembling as she tried to keep her mind focused. The voice echoed in her head, and every creak of the house seemed amplified in the silence. Just as she finished getting ready, the doorbell rang, followed by a knock. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as she peeked through the side window. Just as the caller had predicted, two men in black suits stood at her door, their expressions unreadable as they talked to each other in low voices. Panic set in, and she quickly hid in the small space under the stairs, her breathing shallow and rapid. Moments later, she heard the men forcefully enter her house. Every sound seemed magnified. The creak of the floorboards, the rustle of their clothes, the low murmur of their voices. She held her breath, trying to remain as silent as possible. Do you think she's caught on? One man said, his voice barely above a whisper. Or maybe something went wrong, replied the other, his tone equally hushed. Their conversation was cryptic, hinting at a deeper plot only they understood. After what felt like an eternity, the men finished their search and left. Sarah stayed hidden, her muscles aching from the tension, until she heard the sound of a car driving away. Finally, she emerged, her body shaking from the adrenaline. The house was eerily quiet, the remnants of their intrusion scattered around, the door slightly ajar, a few items knocked over. She decided to skip work, too frightened to leave the house. She paced the living room, trying to process what had just happened. Checking the door, she saw the men were gone. As she turned to go back inside, she noticed a letter in the mailbox her hands trembled as she retrieved it, the weight of the unknown pressing down on her. She went to the living room and sat down, staring at the envelope for a few moments before summoning the courage to open it. Inside was a single piece of paper with a message. May 30th, 7 p.m., Johnson Park. It was signed, Midnight Caller. The fear and curiosity within Sarah intensified. The date and time were set, and now she had to prepare for whatever awaited her at Johnson Park. She couldn't shake the feeling that everything was leading up to this moment, that the answers she desperately sought were within her reach. But with those answers, she knew would come danger. Days passed in a blur of anxiety and anticipation. Every sound, every shadow, seemed to be a harbinger of the next phase of this ordeal. Sarah meticulously planned her approach to Johnson Park, mapping out escape routes and potential hiding places. 